be happy to introduce now Antonio Atanazov, uh, host of the Resource Talks podcast. Uh, I mentioned it in my intro earlier. If you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe to it. It's fantastic commentary on uh, on the resource markets, uranium in particular lately. Fantastic interviews with uh, the CEO of Sprott and others. So, Antonio, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for moderating. Thank you, Kai, for having me. Or should I say I'm sorry in advance? <laughs> I, uh, we're starting off with... Um, Two companies, we're going to do 15 minutes each, and then we can go ahead and have some coffee, because I've had four, but I can have four more. Uh, first one is called Honey Badger Silver. It's a $4 million market cap company. They've got two projects, one in the Yukon and one in Thunder Bay. Uh, ticket symbol is TUF on the Ventures Exchange, and uh, Dusty Nicole, the current CEO, is here with us today. Dusty, take it away. Okay, thank you. God, I feel like I'm being interrogated. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for, for being here. I'm going to talk about our company, Honey Badger Silver. I'd like you to keep in mind as I give this presentation, I am, of course, going to talk about the projects we have, but please view them more as illustrations of our strategy, which we believe is unique or close to unique. We will be acquiring additional properties, and I'd like, to view, I'd like you to view these more as examples of what we'll be doing than as necessarily the be-all and end-all of this company. I'm, I'm, of course, obligated to put this slide up. Every time I put it up, I remember when I was giving a talk in Zurich some years ago, and someone said, ah, the Disneyland slide. Um, it, it, of course, it's possible that despite my best efforts, one or two forward-looking statements may escape me. I urge you, of course, to use, use caution interpreting them and acting upon them. Silver is a critical metal these days. Uh, I know there were some talks yesterday that talked about whether silver behaves more as an industrial metal, more as a precious metal. It, it of course, behaves as both. I don't pretend to be an expert in forecasting silver prices. I, I'm an exploration geologist. I know how to find silver. I don't think my crystal ball is necessarily better than anyone else's. We have this slide to indicate that it does have some increasingly important industrial uses. It continues to have some value as a monetary metal, as a hedge against inflation, and so on. The last point on the bottom right is the one that to me is most interesting. Whatever one thinks of the other aspects, the fact that there continues to be a growing deficit in the supply of silver with respect to consumption indicates that one can have reason to be optimistic for the price of silver. Our thesis for our company is based on the belief that the price of silver will rise over the next few years and that we have a unique opportunity right now when we have coincident relatively low silver prices, great difficulty for junior companies to raise money in the equity markets, great difficulty for projects that haven't completed a bankable feasibility to raise debt finance, we see an opportunity for accretive acquisitions to position ourselves for a future rise in the price of silver. And I'll give you some examples of, of what we've done in that. Uh, this slide, some people really believe this slide, other people think it's a joke. I'll leave it up to you to draw whatever conclusion you wish. More interesting to me is this one, showing the relative gap in supply with respect to demand for silver. Now, why Honey Badger? What are we doing that's different? We do exploration, but we're not an exploration company. And I should perhaps, for context, tell a bit about my background. I'm an exploration geologist. I have about 48 years of experience. I've worked around the world in 86 countries now, looking mostly for gold and silver, some copper and some uranium. I was fortunate that I learned at an early age. I simply was not cut out to work for large companies. And so I've spent my career either with junior companies or as an independent consultant. I've had some success in exploration on more than one continent. But what I've seen that has been very frustrating to me over the years is a 
habit or a repeated cycle of junior exploration companies that go to the market and raise money. They spend the money doing exploration. Then they go to the market and raise more money. And when, when the cycle is up, their boat rises like everyone else's. When the cycle is down, it sinks like everyone else's. Perhaps with a combination of astute geologic effort and luck, they make a discovery. But by then, they have so many shares out that, that no one cares anymore. The other problem that I've seen developing in public companies is when I first started working for juniors, a 500,000 ounce gold deposit was, was considered a respectable gold deposit. Now, if it's not 5 million ounces, in a, nobody wants to hear about it in a public company. So it's really lovely. You do this work, you spend this money, you find a huge gold deposit, and then you have a $738 million capital cost to build it and absolutely no way to race it. So we're trying to do something a little bit different with Honey Badger and not get into that cycle. Our strategy is to acquire, at low cost, silver resources in the ground that may or may not be economic today, but that we believe will be economic in the near future, do just enough work on them to prove their value, demonstrate that the exploration potential is there. We only spend money in the steepest part of the value addition curve of exploration with the idea that at the right time we'll divest these and keep a royalty or a stream. So we're on the way to becoming a royalty or silver streaming company. I believe we'll be one of the few and perhaps the only pure silver streaming royalty company. It will take us a couple of years to fully implement this plan, but I think I'll be able to show you that we're well on the way toward, toward implementing it. Our most recent acquisition was a project called Sunrise Lake in the Northwest Territory. Um, I'm actually very proud of this one. It's the fastest transaction I've ever done. Any of you who follow mining deals know that the mining industry tends to move at a glacial pace. Perhaps appropriately, it moves at a geological pace. This, from the first phone call to closing, was four and a half weeks. And it came to us through a personal contact that a company, SSR, which, which used to be Silver Standard, was one of the early pure silver companies, had a non-core asset. They wanted to divest it. We bought it for them. Um, People called me from the, when they saw the news release. It was not a typo. We bought it for one dollar um, and left them with a four percent royalty, half of which we can buy back for ten million dollars, which might sound like a high price for a royalty, but acquiring it for nothing, if this ever goes into production, a ten million dollar buyback of the royalty will be a rounding error in the capital cost. This deposit has. Um, over 25 million ounces of silver, contained silver, and a bit over 60 million ounces of contained silver equivalent. It's a classic massive sulfide deposit, which I like and am familiar with because I grew up as a geologist working in Spain in the Rio Tinto district. It has upside potential. Our plan for this, having picked it up for $1, the resource is historic. Now, for those of you familiar with Canadian regulations, it's not a 43101 resource, which means we have to be very careful how we talk about it. But with, I think, about one th between 1,000 and 1,300 meters of drilling, which we'll do next year, we'll be able to verify this resource and then talk about it as an actual mineral resource, and then we will in fact be able to say that we bought over 60 million ounces of silver in the ground for one dollar. And these grades, uh, I'll, I'll get to the grades on the next slide. Um, it's some geology here, which, which I won't bore you with. If anyone is, loves geology like I do, we can come see me in room 31 later, and, and I can drive you crazy talking about my love of volcanic rocks and the and the ore bodies that they hold. You see, the resource is uh, 262 grams per ton in the indicated category. That's a respectable grade. Even at today's prices, this deposit has a good chance of being economic. But again, our, the traditional path for a company like ours would be to now raise millions of dollars, finish drilling it out, spend $20 million doing a feasibility study, 
and then look for a partner to help us build it. We're not interested in diluting our shareholders to the extent that that would require. So we, we, what we will do is simply spend a few hundred thousand dollars next year, prove that it's a very valuable resource, and then when it becomes, as, as inevitably it will again one day, when it becomes a seller's market for silver assets, we'll take advantage of it, sell it for the benefit of our shareholders, but keep a royalty and or stream. Moving a bit west from the Northwest Territories in the Yukon, probably the project we're most excited about is Plata. And that, that's a, exciting for a very simple reason. Uh, it's, we're next to Snowline Resources. We're not far from Fireweed Zinc, both of whom I think are presenting here during this conference. Um, I had the, the privilege early in my career, I had as a mentor one of the great exploration geologists of the 20th century, a man named Dave Lowell. Dave found a, a ridiculous number of world-class ore bodies in his career, including Escondida in Chile, Piarina in Peru. Dave had a great saying. He used to say, if you want to find a good ore body, what you do is go to another good ore body and start drilling holes near it. And that's essentially what we're doing here. At Snow Line is one of the hottest stocks in North America right now. They're on the road to great discoveries in their rogue project, and we're next door in the same geology. Again, though, we're not spending a great deal of money drilling. We've done some work to demonstrate that we have the same geology and the same types of targets. We validated the target concept. And at the right time, when we can get the right deal for it for our shareholders, We'll sell it, but we'll keep a royalty. Of additional projects in the Yukon, which are somewhat similar. High property, I'll point out, only because it's a shining example of Dusty's first law of presentations. There is always one ridiculous typo that's only found when I'm up at the podium. And if you look at the second bullet point, I don't really know what a silver scar is, it's silver scarns. It, it's, it's a type of, of ore deposit. Groundhog I like because it's the same geology as a project called Ketza River, where I worked in 2005, 2006, and tripled the ore reserve by understanding the geology. <clears throat> Lastly, I'll talk about Nana Civic because this is another very good example of what we do. Nana Civic was a silver zinc mine, the last 25 years of the 20th century. We found out that, uh, well, we knew that the resource had been mined. We found out that the claims had been allowed to lapse. We staked it for the cost of staking claims. I think it was $2,300 Canadian. And what we acquired was the historic mine, the resource at the time, in the late 20th century, was not defined geologically. It was simply a matter of grade. They mined what had grade and left behind what didn't. In addition to the 18 million tons of ore that was mined, there is still 100 million tons of massive sulfide on the property. That contains one to two grams of silver, up to two to three percent zinc, and interestingly, some anomalous amounts of germanium and gallium which are quite valuable metals now for the critical economy. Uh, again, we picked that up for almost nothing. We're doing a little bit of work to see what is in fact contained in those massive sulfides. In addition to the potential silver, zinc, germanium, gallium mineralization, simply the occurrence of 100 million tons of massive pyrite, three kilometers from a deep water port that's being built by the Canadian Navy right now, might well have commercial value. It, again, as I said earlier, I began my career in Rio Tinto, Spain, where we mined massive pyrite for the German chemical industry. So these are examples of what we're doing. We're looking at some other projects and royalty streams right now in Peru, in United States, um, and possibly on the European continent. Our plan is to continue doing this type of acquisition raising money when needed, but spending it very judiciously so that we build up a value of our currency and when the market shift are in a position to take advantage of it. So I see I have just over a minute left. Are there any, any questions? I have one. Um, nobody has any, anybody has any questions? Go ahead. You mentioned that uh, you don't want 
to donate your uh, shareholders. But uh, what is the, uh, how do you raise money now for keeping the lights on still? So you have to keep that yeah, we have enough money. We will be doing a financing sometime in the new year, but we, ha we have enough money that we don't need to do one imminently. We have a couple of acquisitions we expect to be announcing later this year, early in the new year, and we are hopeful that that will allow our stock to rise enough that we can do a modest financing at, at an acceptable price. I, and, and I wish there were an easy answer to your question, but there isn't. It's, it's so difficult for everyone right now. The best, the, the best strategy we have is to have a plan that does not require a great deal of money to implement. Thank you, Dusty. You also say that your strategy is to go for pure silver deposits and get royalties on it, but those are pure silver deposits are few and far between. And you also say that you want to go in, in you know, good jurisdictions, and that's not always the case for pure silver deposit. How are you going to manage that long term? Um, we can get a pure silver royalty without it being a pure silver deposit. Uh, for example, we're talking now to a group in the United States with a copper gold silver deposit. The silver for them is a very small percentage of their value, but for us it would be a significant stream. So we're negotiating with them to help them get their financing in place in exchange for the silver stream. Thank you, Dusty. This was great. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much.